James Cleverly, who joins me now. Uh, you'll have worked very closely with the delegation uh, from Ukraine, Foreign Secretary. What have you learned about what have you learnt about the state of conflict at this time? Good morning to you. Nick, good morning. Yes, look, it, it, it's always a privilege and it's always rather inspirational when I have a chance to work with uh, uh, any, anyone from Ukraine, quite frankly. But um, I'm here with the Ukrainian uh, foreign minister, the prime minister, uh, a number of other uh, government officials and ministers and a delegation of MPs from Ukraine. Um, and what we are seeing is that they continue to make, a good, uh, you know, sustained if uh, slow progress uh, methodical progress on the uh, on the battlefield, but this conference is also very much about helping them repair uh, their country, helping them to recover from this uh, war. Um, and the UK is using its um, uh, convening power to bring together uh, people from uh, around the world, businesses from around the world, to. Uh, fund that recovery, which is already starting, They're repairing their uh, energy infrastructure and, and other social infrastructure. I'm very, very proud the UK is playing a part of this. I understand or I read that at the Ukraine Recovery Conference, the government has pledged a further £2.4 billion in financial support. Foreign Secretary, what does that, in practical terms, what does that provide for? Well, that will be uh, for a, a, a range of things. That will be for uh, the energy infrastructure, which is so important. That will be to uh, to, to to help some of the uh, commercial infrastructure. Uh, we should remind ourselves that prior to Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine was a net exporter of grain, a huge exporter of grain. It was a net exporter of energy. Um, now, food inflation and grain inflation uh, 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 fuel inflation and food inflation are, are are being felt by British consumers, but also being felt by poor people all around the world. Um, and so it's in Ukraine's interest that we uh, recover. It's in our interest that we help Ukraine recover. And of course, it's in the interest of people around the world. Some of the people listening, Foreign Secretary, will hear 2.4 billion going to Ukraine and they're bracing themselves for an increase in their mortgage rates here. Of course, we have the safety of living in the United Kingdom. We're not living in a country such as Ukraine, but they might look at rather mixed financial messages. How would you respond? Well, look, it is, as I say, it is in our interest that we bring this war to an end. This war, Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine, is in very large part the reason why we are seeing uh, increased prices, why people in the UK are finding it harder to uh, to pay uh, their their bills and uh, afford their uh, shopping. And their mortgages, uh, so, Foreign Secretary? And, uh, yeah, and their mortgages. So it is driving... Just explain the rationale behind that, if you would, Mr. Cleverly. So, so the, uh, the instability that is creating in global markets, global energy markets, global food markets, it's creating inflationary pressure across the globe. And we are seeing that in, in uh, developed economies, Canada, the US, but also as far as field as, as New Zealand and Australia. It is having a global ripple effect, which is hurting people in the UK financially, addressing the situation in Ukraine and getting that country back up on its feet economically so that it can continue to be the breadbasket of the world, massive grain exporter prior to the war. That will help push down those uh, inflation uh, inflationary pressures. The government is also taking uh, the government is also taking action. The prime minister uh, is uh, is absolutely committed to halving inflation uh, this year, um, and we're also making sure that we support those people who uh, are uh, struggling to to pay the bills. And we're also putting pressure on the lending industry, the banking industry, to make sure they do the right thing by their customers and help anyone that is struggling or is at risk of default. Um, and so we're dealing with the here and now, but we're also dealing with the future. Last couple of questions. You'll be anticipating this one. I can't speak to someone in your position without asking. Do you have any update on the situation of the hunt for the Titan mini sub that's gone down to try and find the Titanic? Well, I don't have any uh, detailed uh, information on the uh, the search and rescue uh, attempt. Uh, our High Commissioner in uh, Canada stands ready to help and support in the uh, consular side of things. That's support for British national families. So we are, we you know, we 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 make ourselves available uh, for that. 
but obviously this is a, a technical this is a, a you know, highly technical highly difficult situation um, not one that my department is directly okay. involved in but of course we, we stand ready to support our friends around the world. Finally Foreign Secretary today marks 75 years since the Windrush generation began. Windrush mm. came here. What impact has that had on the United Kingdom and what will you be thinking of today? Mr Cleverly well, look, it, that, that it, this is a moment for great celebration. We should we should recognise the impact of the Windrush generation and those uh, uh, that uh, that followed. I was recently at a, a meeting between the UK and representatives of uh, Caribbean uh, governments in in Kingston, uh, in Jamaica, and I made the point that the UK is an immeasurably better place, a more vibrant, a more diverse, a more exciting place, because of those pioneering uh, uh, people from the Windrush uh, generation. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that UK is a comfortably multi-racial, multicultural country because, because of those people. Uh, so it is a moment for huge, huge, huge celebration. They added uh, not just economically, but socially, culturally. And as I say, I, I, I regard it as a, as a time of great, great, great celebration. Foreign Secretary, thank you for your time. James Cleverly appearing in, here on LBC at 7.34 News Time. The search for a missing tourist sub near the wreck of the Titanic has reached a critical stage. The crew of five were last seen on Sunday and are now thought